before we talked about under-extracted and over-extracted coffee without really going into too much detail of what that really means. And by talking about TDS percentage uh, today, we're going to be able to address at least one fundamental component of what under-extracted means or what over-extracted really means. Uh, up until now, I've just kind of asked you to assign flavor descriptors to each of those phenomena to understand what's going on. And so I want to have a uh, number-based or quantitative understanding of what under-extracted and over-extracted means. When I'm talking about TDS, or total dissolved solids percentage, I want to give, first of all, a definition of what that really means and how it is relevant to our needs. Second of all, a sort of range of uh, TDS percentages that by the SCA are deemed acceptable or optimal. And then we'll talk about calculating the amount of coffee suspended. I know that sounds probably very um, difficult, but it's a very simple uh, multiplication equation that you can do on your phone. The analogy that I want to use to illustrate strength is beer versus distilled spirits. You know that a Miller Lite has to have less alcohol content per milliliter than, let's say, Grey Goose Vodka. The parallel in coffee is espresso versus filter coffee, but I want to note that both of those individually can have differing strengths. Just like vodka might range from like 35 to 45 percent alcohol content by volume, espresso too can have different ranges of concentrations. If you want the technical definition of TDS percentage, it is a measure of the total dissolved organic and inorganic substances present in a liquid in a suspended form. I go on to give an example of how distilled water is different than municipal water, and I think that that really drives home the idea of TDS or concentration or uh, something being stronger or weaker. And if we know something is stronger or weaker, you might be wondering then, like, what is the strength of coffee? Or, like, what's the concentration of coffee? I give some examples in this slide. Note, though, that these examples are just ranges that are given. You might be operating outside of some of these ranges. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're brewing coffee wrong. It's just not what the SCA, the Specialty Coffee Association, would recommend. With this next slide, I'm going to ask you to calculate the amount of coffee suspended. And I know this sounds really like verbose or opaque as to why we're, we're using these specific examples. But if you just trust me for this video and then the next video, I think you'll have a much deeper understanding of how coffee brewing mechanics really work. So to calculate the amount of coffee that's suspended in your solution, you just take the TDS percentage and you'd get that from a refractometer that you'd have and then multiply that times your beverage weight or your beverage mass. What is a refractometer then? A refractometer is a device that measures the refractive index of whatever liquid you put on top of the lens. And it basically calculates the TDS percentage of the solution off of that refractive index. What that means is that there is a lens, you put liquid on it, it shoots a laser through it, and it measures that angle. And by measuring that angle, it's able to give you a TDS percentage or the um, the overall strength of the solution. So now that you understand how to calculate the amount of coffee suspended in your solution, I give a few examples where I'm going to ask you to calculate it. It's super simple. It's just your beverage mass times your TDS, and that's the solubles in grams. TDS percentage is a really good indicator of like how thick or thin the overall solution is. If you have a very high TDS espresso, you know that it's going to have a different tactile uh, expression than if it has a more diluted brew ratio. We're not going to talk about TDS percentage a lot in that way just because the overall brew ratio is fixed for all of our recipes.